I don't know how to describe it other than like like a demon type of sound. But it's silhouetted, hulking, every bit of five and a half feet wide, 13 to 14 foot tall, pitch black. The one thing that ran through my mind when I had this encounter was I don't have a big enough gun. Your host, two-time witness and field researcher for more than 40 years, William Jevnik. Welcome to Creek Devil. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another edition of Creek Devil. Tom, would you like to kick this off? Yeah, absolutely. Carlos, welcome aboard, and thanks again for joining us. You and I chatted for quite a while last night. And you had an encounter kind of in uh, in my neck of the woods. So, um, but you've had actually more than one encounter with these things. But I'd like to start off with that first one. And actually, I'm just going to hand the mic to you. And, you know, you can just start from the beginning, but it's an open forum. Just uh, we'll take it from there and whatever, whichever direction it goes. Okay. Well, uh, thank you, guys. And uh Thank you for having me on. It's a pleasure to to come on and share my experience. But yeah, so, you know, I was uh, probably my mid to late 20s when my first encounter took place. And um, I was on a vacation. Um, I had just uh, left the job and I thought, hey, you know, what better thing to do than to go back to the Pacific Northwest? go all the way up to Washington and you know we were just me and my girlfriend at the time we were driving from campground to campground and it was just kind of one of those trips where it was just kind of free you know no destination you know nothing in mind and um, along the way uh, you know we were driving through the Cascades and um, while we were up there you know camping and doing all that Um, we decided to take the scenic route out of the Cascades down to, uh, I guess, mid-Oregon out there to continue our journey up north. And, uh, you know, we were doing, like, I guess the the typical tourist thing, you know, because it's so beautiful up there. And I I was mentioning that, you know, you see the greenest greens and the bluest blues, you know, different hues for the water and stuff. In the, in the trees and the bark and all. It was just very, very scenic. So we were driving, and as we're, we're driving, I was looking for vantage points where I could pull off the road and walk over to the edge you know, of the road, sometimes a cliff, sometimes not, but to take pictures and get kind of like um, you know, perspective of nature and whatnot. And uh, so we were doing that. And in one stop, and, and it was uh, it was in in a campground. Um, we pulled off the road, and as we were pulling off the road, I don't know if you're familiar with with the area, you you can pull off the road and then you can pull back onto the road. It's sort of like a like a side lane almost, but it's dirt in the trees. Not really, a, not really a, uh, like an access road, but just like a dirt road. But um, in this particular spot, uh, when we pulled out, uh, there was no break in the trees or no trail or any, you know, any real opportunity to to get out and see what was going on, you know, get any kind of pictures or anything like that. So, so as I'm as I'm as I pull out and I see that there's nothing there, um, you know, I'm just kind of like staring and. I start to motion the car, you know, kind of turn the wheel slightly uh, to head back towards the road. I'm I'm still kind of driving towards where the trees are. And as I turn to the left, I I mean, I'm going very, very slow. Um, I sensed that something was looking at me. And I'm not really that kind of you know, touchy feely, you know, um, intuitive kind of person, but this was a pretty strong sensation. And uh, so my window's down, right? And I kind of look straight, you know, and, and I'm getting that feeling. And uh, in my peripheral vision, um, I saw what was a very quick, very slight 
a very definite movement. And, you know, when, when you see something like that, like a, like a bird twitching or like a, like a cat that, you know, moves and realizes you see it and it's, uh, you know, it's just perfectly still. And you look and you don't see the movement, but you saw it out of your peripheral. That's, that's what I experienced. I, you know, I get the sensation, you know, I, I, I kind of like look a little bit straight ahead and then I see that movement and I look. And when I looked, um, you know, for, for the first glance, you know, the first glance, the first second, I, I didn't really see anything. Um, but you know, I'm letting the car roll a little bit and, uh, I, I experienced that parallax kind of effect, you know, where something in the, in, in the background, you know, and in, in between you and the background, you, you see that kind of, uh, differentiation of position of objects. And that's, that's how I saw it. As, as I moved, I got that parallax effect. And the first thing I saw was that there was a creature, um, the head and the shoulders and there was sitting between a Douglas fir with really red, red bark. And, um, in, you know, in, in those trees, sometimes at the base, you get like that shrub chaparral. I'm not sure, you know, what to call it, but I mean, it's just like, you know, green shrubs and it was sitting between the shrubs and the, in the tree, but I, I, I saw its head. And then as, as I'm, inched a little bit more because I mean I'm just barely barely lifting my foot off the brake and as I saw it I kind of froze myself and I'm just kind of barely rolling I mean I'm not even talking a foot a second I'm just talking just barely creep you know keeping by and when I saw it um I saw its head all right um and the, the head was kind of sunken in below the shoulder line and the first thing I noticed is that it was all one color except for the face. The, the face had like, um, and I describe this to you as being like a simian kind of look, mongoloid kind of, you know, almond kind of eyes, but big, dark. Um, you know, uh, just from that glance, I, I, I saw the mouth. Uh, the mouth was kind of, it just looked like a, you know, straight, you know, line I guess between the lips uh, and, and as I saw that I, I looked into it into its eyes and it, for that split second when I first saw it and it was looking in my direction and we made eye contact and I get the chills <laughs> thinking about it but we we made eye contact just for that for that brief second and and I'm still rolling a little bit and as I'm rolling it, it is absolutely perfectly still I mean, just like a statue, or like a wooden carving. I mean, it's not moving whatsoever. But now that, now that I'm rolling forward a little bit, the definition of its body is coming more into into focus. I guess you could say. Um, so now I'm noticing that it's got wide shoulders, and um, you know, but you know, I, I was probably like 15 feet away. Or so, and then, you know, and and I kind of got the impression that it was as wide, or maybe a little bit wider than a doorway, you know, four feet wide around there. Um, I could see that the proportions uh, of the face were different, uh, you know, and I, you know, and I, and I said yesterday that you know, big eyes uh, and the nose and the mouth were and just different you know i, I want to say that they were probably more um there was more space between the nose and the mouth and you know and that's why i'm thinking simian kind of like ape kind of but human kind of stare so uh, as i'm rolling uh, i also see that it's crouched down um like a catcher say like a you know, in a baseball game on its, you know, on its haunches kind of, uh, and its arms were draped. I never saw its feet. Um, but I did see its arms draped over and it just had this uniform. Co 
color and as you know I'm getting like a, a 3D kind of perspective on it um I'm rolling and I could see that it's it's lean you know it, it, it's not I mean it it looked big it looked you know wide and it looked like you know if it, if I, I was in this uh Toyota mini truck with a with a shell on it so it was definitely taller um th th like if I would have gotten out and stood up, I still would not have been at its height. And even if I would have got up there, it, it looked like it was probably as tall as me while it was, sit, you know, sitting up, you know, uh, down, crouched down. Uh, it was just, you know, I'm looking up at that, up at this thing, but it just looked lean. Uh, and I described it like, um, like a football player or a linebacker, you know, someone who just shoulders wide, arms. Never saw its waist, but I, I could just tell that it just had this definition, a very lean definition, you know, just just lean. Um, and uh, as you know, as as I'm as I'm rolling by and I'm seeing this, I mean, again, I, it, it's perfectly still, perfectly still. And once I rolled past it. Um, you know, now I'm like at, you know, at it's like, uh, I would say like at it's 11 o'clock moving to the 10 o'clock position, nine o'clock is I'm, I'm circling around getting back into towards the, towards the highway. Um, I'm just looking at it and I'm, and I'm thinking to myself, you know, w w what am I seeing? You know, and, it, and it's weird because it's, it, uh, I, I got the sensation that it, it, it's alive. It's a creature. Um, I don't know what it is. But, you know, all these thoughts are coming into my head. My girlfriend is sitting there in the car, right? And as this is happening, I completely isolated myself from reality. <laughs> you know, there was, I mean, I'm just staring at this thing. It's only a few seconds, but it seemed like an eternity. It's just making, I'm, I'm like taking in all this information and it's just like compressed in my mind as I'm getting it because I'm having all these thoughts. Forgot about my girlfriend, but as I'm coming around, I turn around. And uh, she had like these big eyes, and she's staring at the at the, at the at the thing, you know. It, it's now you know literally at her, you know, on our left hand side. And I go, "Did you?" And she goes, "Uh huh." And I go, "What was that?" And 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 she goes, "I don't know." And I go, did we see Bigfoot? And and she's just like, I don't know. And, and I could tell that it was just like completely just a, a moment of shock and awe. We were just, you know, both surprised. And, and I suggested, hey, let's go back there. And she's like, no way. You know, in, in a more colorful, colorful way. And she's like, no way. And you know, let's get the, you know, what out of here. And we took off. But that moment, gentlemen, um, it, it changed my life. Um, you know, uh, it, all of a sudden, you know, I felt like, you know, something very unique, very different had happened. Um, you know, and I, from that from that point forward, I, you know, I, I, I've relived this moment many times in my mind, uh, day after day, you know, week, month, years. Uh, I relived this moment because it it it, it made such an impression on me. Um, you know the, the 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 mass that I saw. I mean, if if you saw if you saw someone sitting in you know in in that area like normal person, you know, and crouched down, you know, you, you would be able to tell that it's a, a person. And even if they were like in some kind of suit, uh, you know, the the proportions of the body were completely different. It was it had big massive shoulders the head was in the wrong position uh the head did look kind of conical as as i was turning you know kind of a pointy head but the position of the head was below the shoulder line and it was you know if it had not twitched if it had not twitched at all i would not have seen it i probably would have had that same sensation but it was the movement that almost like a like a bird when it just you know just looks really quick and you know they move their head so fast so slight so controlled that's what caught my attention you know and that's when i saw it
um, but it was perfectly blended in. Um, I would not have seen it, and you know, and, and it was just such a such a moment in my life that you know, um, it, it just created a, a desire to know, you know, what I was looking at, um, and, and this is about ninety one, and uh, you know, as I guess you could say more information became available uh, through the internet and whatnot. Uh, I started looking at everything uh, and trying to learn as much as I uh, I could about these things. But I'll, I'll never forget that moment. It was it was absolutely uh, just it, it it took me out of my you know what I felt comfortable with <laughs> knowing that existed. You know, I I. I didn't know what I was looking at, but yet I knew what it was. Um, and, and as I told Tom yesterday, I, you know, I, I fall into two groups. You know, I know they exist. You know, I know they do, uh, and I don't know what it is, but I know that they're out there, and and I have no idea why uh, it, it moved. Uh, maybe because. I was rolling so slow, almost, you know, just about to stop. Then I turned my, my wheels and then I just kind of like, well, they're breaking. I just moved and I, I just kind of pivoted on the road. Maybe, you know, maybe it was just hyper-focused and thought that, you know, uh, I wouldn't move and it was going to move. I, I don't know. But the moment I started rolling back on and it twitched, that's when I saw it. And that was just. Uh, yeah, it was just that moment that, you know, I think, wow, you know, my life, you know, I, I went down this path, you know, trying to find out everything I could about these creatures from that point forward. If that had never happened, I I, you know, we, I would have never, you know, uh, you know, had this passion about finding out more about them or anything like that. It just would have been another day in the woods. <laughs> but that's you know, what happened. Carlos, the, the one thing is two things actually that you said that um, really resonate with me, and I know they resonate with Will. When you see it, when you become aware, when you have that moment, um, it kind of your whole worldview is, I don't want to say challenged, but it certainly expanded, right? It, it evolved instantly, correct? Yeah, it sure did. And then you you talked about thinking about it daily. And it's, I, I don't know, daily, but, but frequently. And I know that I rarely does a day go by that I don't think about um, the experiences that I've had with this topic. It's it, it just, it sticks with you. It's the first thing I think of in the morning. The last thing when I think of at night, quite often, you know, sometimes I'll go, you know, I don't do that. But for the most part, I've spent a lot of time thinking about it. I think my worldview was out the window. <laughs> right well it well it, it did you, you, you know and, and i mentioned that this happened back in 91 you know I, I was a kid you know still in college and all that um but there was no one to talk to about it um really and and i think that's it, i i was left with a, a desire to know more but yet um not there wasn't any really hope that I could go somewhere and talk to anyone or share my experience without being ridiculed. Right. And there was a couple of times where I, I did try to mention it to some of my closest friends at the time. Uh, but they laughed and, you know, it's like, yeah, you know, what were you smoking? You know, and it's like, and it, you know, and, it, and it's frustrating because having that, in my mind and then you know not being able to talk to anyone i mean i could have talked to my girlfriend but she just wasn't the type that you know that wanted to talk about it i think she was more scared than anything and she never ever wanted to revisit that encounter um that experience it, no matter how hard i tried she just said nope nope she's had nightmares about it and she just dealt with it completely different um, so, you know, that's why I say I thought about it for so long because I, I really did. I, I wanted to go back up there. Um, I wanted to know more about it because I, I just felt like 
all of a sudden, you know, things that I've heard, you know, um, and I mentioned that, you know, I, I grew up, in, you know, in the 70s and 80s and there was, you know, in search of and all these documentaries, uh, but they were nowhere near enough. Once you see one, you, you know, you look at some of these old reports and, you know, old shows and you think, wow, you know, I know so much more about it now. You know, those shows just kind of didn't really even come close to serving the need that I had about finding out more. And, 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 and with me, with the way I think, the way I am, um, you know, I, I, I try to think things through and try to rationalize. And it just didn't make sense. It, it just, you know, how can these things exist? You know, how can how can they have a breeding population, not just, you know, in the Pacific Northwest, but across the U.S.? How can they? How can they exist and everyone's either lying or they're in denial? You know, uh, I, I just don't get it. And, you know, the more I dug into this, the more I realized that for whatever reason, it's just something that is taboo in our society, uh, but they exist. And, you know, um, you know, some of the, you know, um, Native American and First Peoples tribes in the Northwest have written about this and, and they've made it part of their lore and they've got costumes and totem poles and, you know, they're all these different names and, you know, you know they name areas, you know, because uh, when I think of Creek Devil, I think of, you know, <laughs> other places that are named accordingly because of lore and legend and and it just started, you know, as, I, as I'm thinking about this, something, you know, it's like something needs to happen where we find out the truth, um, you know, as a society. But I don't know that we're ever going to get there. But I do know that they're out there. I, I just don't – it just doesn't fit in my mind how they can exist without everyone coming to terms with it and agreeing that they exist. Just, well, I want to I want to touch on that some more in a moment, and and actually we're going to talk about because you this isn't the only encounter that you had, but no. uh, just touching on the um, reaction and why people react the way they do because I've you know I've talked about it to um, people that I know uh, even at family reunions you know some family members um, there's a visceral rejection. And they're like immediately they want nothing. They they want to distance themselves from it, and they get angry. No, that thing doesn't exist. And 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 I don't know if it has to do with the silliness uh, that the media has treated the topic, or you know. So now, if if you agree with it, you somehow have to be in that camp of being a. Uh, foolish person or something i <clears throat> i'm not sure what it is i maybe it's something like that but it's frustrating because i've had people say the same thing to me well gosh were you were you chewing peyote when you saw this <laughs> you know and all that kind of silly stuff um and it's uh it is frustrating because basically what they're saying is you're a liar and what you're telling me is a lie and i'm not going to believe it and and so they're calling your credibility and your character into question, which is pretty aggravating, right? It is. It, it's insulting, you know. Um, I, I, you know, Tom, Will, I, I pride myself in being, you know, uh, rational and articulate, and uh, you know, I've, you know. So I can't mention this. I, I'm an engineer, um, you know, and, and I have a graduate degree. You know, I, I have taught at a university at one time, you know, um, but I've worked for you know, the government and um, large firms. And, you know, people pay me for my ability to analyze, design, manage, drive things and, you know, and get results. And, you know, I'm not trying to pat myself on the back on that, but I mean, what I'm trying to say is I know what I saw, you know, and, and there's, there's, there's absolutely zero gain 
for me to, to go out and, and fabricate something like this. You know, and it is frustrating because, uh, you know, I remember one time um, a college friend of mine, um, I told him, I go, these things exist. He's like, how do you know? I was like, because I've seen you. And he goes, and immediately he jumped back to the Hieronymus thing. He's like, oh, yeah, well, wasn't that a guy in a in an ape suit? And he starts laughing. And I was just like, there's no way. Yeah, I mean, that was back in you know, the sixties, you know, and this is now, and that guy's not waiting for people still, you know, and, you know, and I know more about those situations. And I absolutely, you know, in my opinion, you know, you know, he wasn't everywhere <laughs> and he definitely wasn't there when I rolled by that particular place, but, um, he yeah, wasn't there, insane. was he? <laughs> no, <laughs> it, it, it's, it is so frustrating yeah to have people bring that up or any other silly tabloid, um, you know, excuses or reasons that they don't exist. And, and, you know, like you said, it's insulting to call your question into character. And I, at some point I, I'm almost like, you know, some of these people, it's like, I've got two words for you. They're not. Thank you. <laughs> yes. You know, it's very frustrating. <laughs> well, here's, here's a point. Um, you know, you saw, you saw one, I've seen the creatures when somebody comes along that's never seen anything. How is it that their opinion has more weight than yours or mine who've actually seen the things? Yeah. Yeah, you're right. It's, uh, they're not, they're not really being rational about their statements calling you you know or me or whoever irrational you're right it doesn't make sense you weren't there you didn't see what i saw and you know your uh dismissal to make it sound like it were, you know i was imagining thing imagining something yeah it's definitely insulting because i know i didn't imagine that and you know and it would be one thing and this is something i've always said you know it's like you know well, my girlfriend was there and she saw it and it changed her life too. In, in kind of in a negative sense, you know, not, you know, not that she went spiraling out of control, but I mean, she did not want to talk about it and she did not want to go camping anymore. You know, and I was just like, okay. And I understand. Yeah. She didn't, she didn't want to engage. Uh, it was, it was scary to her. And I think it was just her, her, like a defense mechanism, self-preservation, you know. Um, so yeah. this isn't the only experience that you've had. Um, what are what's another one? What's the other one that you you were talking about? Because that was pretty fascinating as well. <laughs> yeah. So I've taken. It, it seems like you know it, this has happened on vacations, and <laughs> you know, be honest, it has because. Um, I, I like to go hunting, um, and uh, I was out in Texas, um, out in the central part of Texas, more in the in the Green Plains area, um, and I was, you know, I drove there because you know you're driving with hunting equipment, you know, uh, you know, rifle, ammunition, that kind of stuff. So I'm driving. And, uh, I was scouting out areas to go hunting and I, you know, had actually finished uh, a session of hunting. So I, I was looking for the next spot to go hunting. Um, and I, I pulled into the ranger station and, uh, they, you know, you, you get maps there and kind of ask the, the ranger about some of the areas. And, you know, we were talking and, and I was saying, hey, so I'm looking for... Um, you know, national forest land sections uh, out in Texas. Sometimes you get areas where you have private property kind of in the same area intermingled with certain sections of um, forest or, or land that's not owned. You know, m most of the land in Texas is owned. So you get very, very little sections um, that are not, uh, not private property, but sometimes they're like, the the back lines of properties butt up against you know ravines and trees and that kind of stuff that don't really belong to anyone they're part of the national forest so i was looking 
for those sections in that particular area, knowing that hogs tend to go into the into the ravine, um, you know, little canyons, and they kind of go halfway up and they kind of burrow in. Um, but at the same time, you know, I, I was thinking to myself, you know, and this looks like there there'd be an area where if if I was a creature, you know, I would probably be able to, uh, as we put it yesterday, right, cover and conceal, have access to properties. And then I started looking for any kind of water and I saw that there was a pond. So I'm asking the ranger, so how do I find this road? And they're not giving me directions. Right? You go down the highway. You got to be careful. You know, between this highway and this highway, there's, a, you know, like a break in the trees. And if you look carefully, there's a little marker there that says, you know, it's root, you know, so-and-so. And he goes, you, you take that and, you know, you go down and you get to a campground and whatnot. So I, I'm, you know, saying, okay, thank you. And take my map, go. And I, I found this road. So I'm, turn into this road and it's it's basically a, a dirt road coming off of a state route and it was probably about two miles I, I'd say and uh, so I get to the end of this and there's like a little campsite and uh, so I, and I'm I'm now uh, I took this trip with with my uh, ex-wife and she, so she was with me and, um, so she's getting out, I'm getting out, and, you know, I have, I, I was carrying a sidearm, too, so, get out of the car, and I'm starting to holster my weapon, and there was a guy sitting there, uh, and he was kind of friendly, and he was, like, talking to me, hey, what you doing, and I'm just like, yeah, hey, I'm just gonna go hiking, he's like, okay, and he's telling me, yeah, he goes, I stay here, and I guess the guy stays in a campground when he runs out of money to pay for hotels. I guess he's quasi homeless, right? Stays in the hotel. And then when he's runs out of money, he goes in camp. So he was telling me that, and you know, and I felt bad for the guy and I was like, Hey, so I'm going to go for a while. I go, would you watch my car? I'll give you some money. And he was like, yeah, sure. No problem. So I give him some money. And, and I start walking into the forest. Now it, I had the map and I knew my position. So um, I start you know, with the compass, kind of doing, uh, you know, some hiking with uh, plotted segments, checking my compass, because it, the, the trees there in that area are super thick. As soon as you walk into the tree line, 30 or 40, 50 feet, you can look back and you don't see anything except trees. So, you know, I've, I've hunted in this area and, I, you know, I've done hiking all my life. And, you know, the last thing I want to do is get lost or have a bad experience. So I'm I'm walking and I'm just, I see that there's a little ravine, and I know that there's a, a pond at the end of that, so I'm kind of walking towards the ravine, and then I'm walking along the ravine and just you know, making my way down there. So I'd say about a half a mile. I finally, I finally get to the pond, and um, you know, as I get to the pond, I'm looking around, going, "Okay, so which way now?" And I, I look. Uh, at the water line and in in the pond it, just to give you some reference it, it, it had to have been like maybe like uh 60 70 feet at the widest by like about 30 or 40 feet it's basically um you know a collection of where the little ravines from the from the areas kind of collect and they just you know kind of fill up the pond there so i'm looking at it and then as as i look carefully I saw footprints and I thought to myself, no way. And so I walk over to where the footprints are. And, and so th the footprints were coming from the opposite direction of where I was headed. And it looked like they kind of skewed towards the pond a little bit and then went back into the wooded line. And then they, they went back in the direction of where I had just come from, but they they were not along the tangent line that I was walking, but they were off to the side a little bit. But as I'm looking at these, I'm taking it all in, I, there was three sets of footprints. Um, they 
all had kind of the same basic configuration. There was, you could see the definite heel, definite toes. Um, the small one was probably, probably closer to my size. I have like a size nine or something like that, but you know, just, you could see there was no shoe. It's just, a, you know, a heel and toes. Um, and along the side, there was a slightly bigger one, or I mean, I'm sorry, I mean, substantially bigger, but just, you know, kind of thicker and again, toes. And then I saw a huge one. Um, and I remember putting, uh, my boots together and it was, it, it wasn't as big as two of my boots, but it was probably pretty close. I, I'm going to say that probably, uh, 17, 18 inches, uh, from toe to heel. And th they were spaced out, um, I'm going to say probably four feet, maybe more. Um, in terms of cadence, you know, I I would not be able to, to, to walk like that comfortably. Um, the, the one that had the smaller cadence was the one with the smaller prints, which made sense. So I'm looking at these and I'm thinking, you know, okay. So I didn't see what made them. You know, I know these things exist. I, you know, I, I believe that there is a breeding population uh, spread out throughout the U.S. I you know, absolutely have come to uh, accept that as fact. Um, but I'm looking at these thinking, okay, uh, you know, it's not, you know, I, it, it, it can't be just people walking out there without shoes that far into the brush. I mean, you know, from walking from the little campground to that pond was absolutely rugged, you know, uh, you know, lots of leaves and twigs and there's snakes and there's a million insects, you know, just in the step, you know, in the path that I took, you know, if you're walking barefoot, you're going to get chiggers, you're going to get every kind of biting insect, not to mention mosquitoes the size of hummingbirds, you know, they're just, they're everywhere. So, you know, you, you wear clothing, you know, uh, really to, to protect yourself from the bugs and no one that I know of would think about walking out there barefoot you know in a, in a sustained walk out there and so all these things are going through my head and i'm thinking okay so i'm gonna follow these um these footprints uh and go in the direction of where they came my thinking was if i go there i'll see where they come from you know and i'll come back later or whatever you know because i only saw them walk in one direction um so i i start walking you know, and I'm kind of guessing because, in, as I mentioned, they came out of the wood line towards the water, then back into the wood line. So I'm walking towards uh, towards the wood line, just kind of, you know, extending the line, uh, the, the path of where they, you know, it went to the pond. And so I get to the top of the bank and I go over that and I walk, I don't know, 50, 60 feet, something like that. And... Um, I mentioned that I'm I'm plotting my steps, right? So I'm walking and then I'm checking, I'm walking, checking. Um, and I stopped and I had that same sensation that something was looking at me. Um, and it, you know, I, I rarely ever felt that. Um, you know, I, I can't think of, you know, maybe a handful of times that I've had that in my life. Um, but this was a definite, you know, feeling of being watched. And as, as I realized that I was having that feeling, I had that, that rush, almost like deja vu kind of rush, uh, you know, because, you know, I felt like the hair, you know, on the back of my neck and, you know, goosebumps. And I, I just kind of, I'm looking in that direction. And I realized that there wasn't a sound from any animal or insect or anything. It was absolutely completely quiet, like a vacuum type of quietness. Uh, and, you know, I, I, I felt so small, you know, because it was so quiet. I, I could feel the breeze, but 
that's about it. It was it was just absolutely quiet. And then I felt and, and or heard like a very guttural um like uh, like uh, almost like a uh, you know like a like a like something out there uh, you know kind of like almost like frustrated or exclamating like you know from breath or maybe saw you know just kind of like uh, just, just you know but I, I i i can't say i heard it alone i i i i think i felt it more than i heard it but I definitely felt it, you know, and it was just, it was bizarre. And I, I kind of got the, the, the feeling that I shouldn't be there. Um, I, I don't know how else to describe it. Uh, my ex-wife uh, was next to me and, you know, we're having a dialogue about all this, you know, quietly. But when we stopped and it was quiet and I look at her and, you know, she's looking straight ahead and she told me, let's let's get out of here. And I'm like, okay. So we start walking back. And now I'm following the footsteps in their course of travel. And uh, I decided to head back uh, following the footsteps. So now I'm walking back the way I came, but just in a different tangent line, uh, you know, maybe 20 feet away from where I had come down along the ravine, but just, you know, in, in more away from the ravine and now I'm seeing footsteps every so often impressions in some of the the soft you know mossy kind of substrate um nothing as clear as what I saw in the in the sandy portion of it but definitely you know uh I was seeing the bigger ones I didn't see the smaller ones um after we got through the wood line but I did see the bigger one and the and the medium sized one, and again, the, you know, I would see it and then not, you know, for a few feet, and maybe one here, one there, and, you know, and I saw them. So uh, as I was walking out, and then I lost track of them. <laughs> I lost track of the tracks, right? I lost them um, uh, as I as I made my way closer and closer to um, where I was parked. So. Um, I finally got to the campground and, you know, and we didn't talk, uh, about this, but, you know, we're like, okay, so we'll, let, let's, let's get in the car. L- let's get out of here. And then, you know, we'll talk. Cause I, I, you know, I didn't even think about asking her to go back in there cause we were already there, you know, and it's just, I, I just wanted to get out of there. I'd, it made an impression on me, like whatever it was, it didn't want me there. And that noise that i heard was like someone saying man why is this person coming it's like yeah you know frustration so i was like i'm not gonna i'm not gonna stick around so anyways so we get back to the car and that guy's still there and uh he goes hey you're back and i'm like yeah and so i gave him a couple more dollars i go thank you so much you know and i appreciate you you know keeping an eye on my car and He's like, sure, no problem. He goes, hey, you, you got to be careful back there. And I was like, oh, he goes, yeah. He goes, uh, he goes, there was a, he goes, uh, I was, you know, I, I was, I think he said like the night before, two nights ago, he goes, uh, a panther came out of there uh, while I was sleeping. You know, and I was like, oh, uh, and tell me, what do you mean? And he's like, yeah, he goes, I was asleep and, you know, he had a shell on his little truck and um he was staying inside and sleeping and he said that he heard footsteps and a very 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 deep guttural kind of grunt you know and he says he's like yeah there's no bears around here and he goes and hogs make different noises so he goes it's got to be a panther or something like that and i'm just like oh I go, did you see anything? And he's like, well, he goes, I looked up and um, he goes, and in the direction of where it came, it was in the wood line. I saw something black moving and it was, you know, it looked about the size of a panther and it was just kind of black, you know? So I, he goes, and, you know, I, I figured it was a, a panther. And, and so I was like, oh, okay, well, you know, and 
you know, I said, well, okay, you know, you be careful. You know, and I left and, um, you know, I was thinking, you know, as I was leaving there, it's like, maybe it's one of these things that, you know, got on all fours as it was coming up to the campground looking for, you know, things that people throw away or, or whatever. But I know, I mean, I'm, I, I don't know for certain, but I'm pretty darn sure that there are no big cats, no panthers, no black panthers out in that part of Texas. At least I've never heard of any, you know, any, anything, you know, even remotely close, but he described that, you know, same kind of dark, you know, I'm sorry, deep guttural sound. And I thought, okay, there, there's, there's some validation there. Uh, my ex-wife told me that she also heard um, um, you know, that deep guttural sound, but she, you know, and I didn't mention this before, Tom, but she, she mentioned that she heard like, um, some kind of wording, like, you know, Micmac, you know, she, she said that Micmac and I was just, and it was like a, 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 a talking point from that point forward, you know, Micmac was what she thought she heard that whatever made that noise vocalize and my hearing is pretty bad so all all, all i can say is i heard something very deep you know no def definition of any kind of you know um sounds just the deep guttural but that, that's what she said she heard well you know i'm going to jump in for just a second i want to comment two things yeah number one you and i we talked about this last night as well number one Okay, if it is a panther, which it wasn't, but if it was, you never hear a panther walk across. You never hear them. I've, I've talked to people who've had right. mountain lions, you know, who, who have snuck up on them. And the only reason they survive is because their partner behind them saw it. And so you, they're cats. Okay, you don't hear. Number two, the only panthers or pumas or mountain lions in North America are just that. They're really an oversized house cat. They're huge. And they're the only one in the cat world that doesn't growl. African lions growl. Um, I think jaguars growl, but nothing in North America goes, Rrr. and so, you know, two, two strikes against that theory is number one, you don't hear them walk. And number two, they don't growl. Yeah. Well, I just, I, you know, I, I agree with you. I'm, uh, you know, I'm not, you know, into, you know, um, yeah, I, I don't know anything about different species of cats or anything like that. But I, I do live in an area where there are mountain lions, uh, and they do sneak up. They'll jump in your yard, you know, you know, take your German Shepherd by the neck and jump back over. They're like 200 pounds around here. Uh, but you're right, they're they're quiet and. You know, and I found it very peculiar that uh, as I was coming back, you know, he mentioned that, it, you know, he heard that guttural thing. And, and then he looked out and he saw something black that kind of resembled a panther. And he just kind of put, you know, you know, um, I, I don't want to call it a fact, but, uh, you know, observation element one and observation element two and came out with must be a panther because that's probably the... The only thing that he could have maybe related to in his experience of something black crawling around that makes like a, a deep growl. But yeah, I, I just, it, it, to me, it was, you know, it was validation the, that there's something back there. Uh, but those footprints, um, they were just, they were humanoid uh, or, you know, what resembled the humanoid. Uh, kind of configuration they, they were bigger and the other thing is is that they you know when you see human prints unless someone is extremely flat-footed with a fallen arch you see you know the the heel and then the outer crescent of the the side of the foot and then the the, the ball on the toes that's not what this was this was like you know uh the shape of a foot you know, wide and long and heavy. I mean, I wasn't leaving tracks in the substrate where I was seeing him as, you know, when we went into the um, inside, you know, backing, 
back towards the the little campground but they were there and you know and i have to think that that if i saw them and they were still with pretty clear definition that they would have had to have been made you know in the the last day or so more than likely because it it does rain out there and even though this isn't like an area that's heavily you know uh visited by people because it's i mean it's 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 way off the beaten path and you know unless you you know you enjoy that kind of walk you know in the thicket with bugs um you know you're you're probably not going to do it and so whoever was walking back there whatever was walking back there, you know, I, I, I refuse to believe that it was people with the kind of weight that it takes to make that kind of an imprint with the kind of size and proportions and then dragging in tow somebody else with smaller feet. And yet again, somebody else with even smaller feet all walking barefoot back there. It just, you know, the context of what I saw, it just doesn't support that someone would be back there just on, on the hope that someone would see something and, and for what? You know, so whatever caused it out there, I think that they were just walking back towards the campground, you know, and they sneak in and sneak out quietly. And this guy just caught a glimpse of them because, you know, he was asleep, but not really and heard them. So I, 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 I think that it all kind of happened probably within the last day or so, certainly from when that guy was there, which I think, you know, he'd been there a couple of days at the most. So something's something was in there as well. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, and footprints. I mean, you said what, seventeen, eighteen inch on the yeah. big one. Yeah. Yeah, that's that rules out a person. Period. Nobody. Just sorry. And and flat footed. You know, like you said, like a um, lack of an arch. Yeah, you know, and and uh, by this point in my life, I. I'd kind of, you know, um, and, 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 I, and, I, and I say I, I look, I, I read all the different articles, listen to all the good podcasts. You know, I've, uh, I've had, you know, conversations with people about some of the attributes of these creatures, at least from, you know, from, uh, from a personal experience, you know, realm, you know, and, you know, I've seen, I've seen a lot of information, you know, that I consider, you know, valid and you know, you know, done right and judicious and, you know, fact-based. And the, the one thing that I, I'd say is that when, when you step on the ground, if you're walking barefoot um, in those areas and you're not used to, um, you know, walking barefoot in the thicket in Texas where there's all that stuff, I mean, you're going to get cut up and you're going to be tiptoeing and you're going to be stepping not with, you know, four foot cadences as if you were you know running or hopping you're going to have a tenderfoot kind of the pace uh you know you're going to be stepping on rocks stepping on you know anything to to cushion and protect your foot you know and that's not what i saw i saw you know foot marks that were from a weighted you know physical presence sinking into um into the substrate well and you know there's another good point here and that is um going barefoot in the woods is just not a thing anymore i mean it's you know i think in our you know going back a couple generations grandparents uh you know more of a agricultural lifestyle you know it might have been more common for people to to go barefoot they don't do that today it's you know, shoes are foot coverings are very inexpensive yeah. and easy to come by and yeah. just nobody does that. And and even if they did, they're not going to have a 17 or 18 inch foot. So I think that pretty well, you know, that, that kind of nails it down. And then the grunt that you yeah. heard and um, all of that. And then this other gentleman that was there, the, you know, semi homeless guy. Um yeah, he he validated that. You know what what would prompt him to say, "Hey, you got to be careful out there." You know, I think what I think the answer to that is that it caught him off guard. He didn't know what to think. He sees me going in there, 
you know, armed or whatever. And, you know, he just felt like, you know, hey, yeah, you're armed, but whatever's out there, there's there's an animal out there was the message. And even if you're armed, you, you know, you know, from his perspective, it was a big cat. That may not be enough. <laughs> and I would have to agree with him, except that, you know, I I just I know it wasn't a cat, whatever, whatever he saw. I'm pretty sure it was a creature that doesn't necessarily get noticed as much, you know, because it's it, it's in this corridor. Uh, and, and I mentioned where it was in the corridor of trees. It's super thick and it runs along the back uh, of these properties. You know, and the only way to get there is through these access roads or cutting across from somebody's property. So whatever, whoever's coming in and out, you know, um, it has to go through there. Anything else that's that, you know, is staying back there, you know, is is under concealment most of the time and, and and it's dark even during the days there so whatever he saw he just you know he just assumed it was like a, a cat because that's the only thing he can think of but no i know it was couldn't have been that and whatever was leaving those prints obviously was not a cat well we have a couple of gentlemen the down in texas that we get very frequent reports hmm. from uh joe and walter and it's they never come back empty-handed when they go out they look for these things and um, i think will can probably speak to that a little better than i can as far as the temperament i think of these creatures is uh, a little more aggressive uh, they're just a different breed of these things down in texas so yeah it seems like it it seems like it they would need to be you know because i think in in the Pacific Northwest, they can flee pretty, pretty quickly. Uh, I'd say, in, at least in in the area that I saw them. But out in Texas, I mean, you know, I've heard that even like in, um, I mentioned like in the eastern portion of Texas, as you get, you know, closer to Arkansas and Louisiana, and some of these sightings that take place, like in and Sam Houston National Forest. It, these sightings take place not very far away from people's houses, you know. And I and I think that they they probably get skittish because they they do have confrontations with probably dogs and hunters and and, and whatnot. I, you know, maybe just thinking it through. I mean, it makes sense that you know, if, you know, you'd probably have to scare things off more than you would out in the Pacific Northwest. Just a thought, you know. But yeah, that, that was no. I would I would agree. It's it's. Uh, I think the creatures are adapted to whatever environment they're in, uh, obviously, because that's how yeah. they survive. And um, so, well, listen, uh, we you got to stay in touch with us. Uh, okay. It was a very good uh, conversation and hearing about your encounters and. And of course, I took particular interest in the first one because I've I've camped in that campground and I know it very well. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, really fascinating. Thanks, gentlemen. I, I really appreciate you guys giving me the opportunity to put this out there. It's therapeutic. It, it really is, and you know, it's. It is. It's like a, Yeah. <laughs> I, I know the feeling. Let me tell you. Yeah. It is. I really appreciate it, and I hope. Um, one of these days maybe the truth comes out or or maybe not i i don't know how i feel about that you know because i mean there are, there are people out there that you know ridicule the topic and oh, you know yeah. they go you know what i mean they go out there and, and on tv you just see a bunch of junk and you know just it, it's sad and i think the enigma you know that that you know we're interested in here is you know it's fascinating because to, to have a species that thrives um, on being stealth and you know and evading you know human presence and human humans all together is a sign of you know utter intelligence. Yeah. And there's yeah there's so much room here in this country where they could walk back and forth. You know, 
I almost well, want to say it's, it. Yeah, it's it's it seems like the whole topic is uh, it's it's encouraged in some circles to be disrespected. So, um, well, listen, yeah. I think we're going to wrap this up, okay. and um, I appreciate you coming on. Um, right, stick gentlemen. around uh, for just a moment when we uh, go off the air here, and I'll, I got a question for you. Okay. Carlos, thank you again so much. We really appreciate your time. Likewise, though. All right, everyone, stay tuned for the next segment. Thanks for listening to this episode of Creek Devil. If you or anyone you know has had an encounter with these creatures, please contact us at williamjevning at yahoo.com. That's William, J E V N I N G, at yahoo.com. All communication is confidential. Join us for another program next week. And until then, keep your eyes open now.